Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Ohio Woodburner. This is Joe, and we are already en route. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. I have been working at developing a partnership with a local business. It's a chimney sweep, a very reputable firm. They've been in business for a while. They're a third generation chimney sweep. And I thought that we could go uh, talk with him. He wants to show us a little bit about your flu, these new EPA stoves, and the role that firewood plays with um, safe burning. So that is what is in store today. And we are here. I want to introduce you to Corey Taylor Flowers. He is the owner of Taylor Made LLC. They are a third generation chimney sweep here in the Moaning Valley. Corey, how you doing, bud? Doing well, man. We're going to have a, a socially distant um, uh, interview here. And uh, I thought maybe we could meet with Corey and he can talk about chimney sweep and how it relates to firewood. But first, let me give you my business card. And because I watched one of your videos, Right oh back at you. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to like this guy already. All right. So, Corey, tell us a little bit about your company. All right. Uh, my grandpa started the business in 1981. He had a chimney fire, and a neighbor down the road had a chimney fire, and nobody knew what to do about it back in the early 80s. So, grandpa said, well, I'll figure it out. He went to a couple seminars, evidently he figured it out. My uncles and my dad have all done the business at some point, but my dad is the one that hit, hit it right off the bat stuck with it, uh, became a Navy uh, CB, construction battalion, uh, journeyman mason, and went and got trained at CSIA. I took the business over about two and a half years ago. My father retired, and I'm very fortunate to be able to say I'm third generation, obviously, but I've done it since I was a kid, about 12 years old, getting in the fireplaces and sweeping them out. Thanks a lot, Corey. So let me ask you this. What kind of services does Taylor Made perform? All right. Uh, Oftentimes we are coming out to do an inspection and a sweep of someone's fireplace or wood burner. And with that, we do find issues. Uh, so we like to address those issues. Whether it's a rebuild of a chimney, brick block stonework, we take a lot of pride in being able to match the work that was there prior. We don't want you to see that the repair was done. With that, we also do stainless steel liners for hot water tanks, furnaces, wood burners, fireplaces. We do recommend as per the NFPA 211, that you have an annual inspection, uh, whether it's a furnace, hot water tank, fireplace, wood burner, it actually says it right in our codes and standards. Um, where could homeowners or people with an interest in this, where could they go to find these industry standards? The CSIA.org is a great place to start. They're one of the entities that give certifications and do the education of chimney sweeps all over the United States. Uh, there are a couple others such as CCP, which is CertifiedChimneyProfessionals.com and there's also NFI, which is the National Fire Institute. Uh, they, all three of those have websites where you can search for a sweep uh, that's local to you. I think you should probably put the links in those down at the bottom, yeah? Oh, okay. There right. you go. Corey, thanks a lot for all that. The viewers of our channel are, are passionate about firewood. They're passionate about making firewood selling firewood, burning firewood, and obviously chimney sweep and the firewood industry seem to work together. Um, what do you see in your profession with chimney sweep that um, how the firewood industry and the firewood that's getting sold to houses plays with uh, some of the things that you're seeing? When I show it to a customer's house, I'm there to inspect. One of the first things I want to know is what kind of wood they're burning. Uh, the moisture content makes a, is a big deal with uh, how much creosote is going to be produced. Just like water vapor turns the water when it cools, smoke turns the creosote when it cools down. Now all creosote is, is unburned fuel and a concentrated form of fuel. Okay, so when that is gonna ignite or catch, it's going to burn a heck of a lot hotter than your wood fire, your wood burner, or your fireplace, okay? Your typical wood stove, you get a stove thermometer, pop it on the front of that, or even a pipe, 
thermometer, you're, you're roughly about 250 to about 450 degrees with the unit. Your creosote ignites at 1100 degrees and goes up upwards at 2200 degrees. It's like burning gasoline. <laughs> so I've heard customers talk, you know, I heard a bang, a boom, a pop, uh, and they had a chimney fire. But most customers have no idea that they had a chimney fire. I'm, I'm the one discovering it. So Corey, you are headquartered in Warren, Ohio, but what kind of region do you serve? We're in the Mahoning Valley and surrounding areas. Here's what I'm thinking. I have a champagne chimney sweep service, all right, in TaylorMade. And I take a lot of pride in what I do with my firewood, and I don't sell green firewood. Uh, I think maybe there's a business opportunity here for both of us, a win-win, huh? Where um, if, if a customer asks me for a chimney sweep service, I can refer them to you. Yes, if a customer asks you for a reliable supplier of seasoned firewood, you could refer them to me. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, we're here at your shop. Do you have any examples maybe that you can show us about uh, what's burning uh, unseasoned firewood can do to a catalyst? or to a, a chimney? I have uh, quite a selection of show and tell items. Okay, this is what I was waiting for, guys. Here we go. We are inside Corey's showroom and we're gonna have a socially distant interview. I'm gonna stay on the other side of the room and uh, Corey's gonna give us a presentation on what uh, he's been finding out there in houses. Welcome to our showroom. I have some show and tell items here. We will. Uh, start with the catalyst. So here is a catalyst that's obviously damaged and broken up And here's one that's brand new How does this happen? This usually happens from thermal shock So if you happen to have a catalyst that has minor breaks in it and it's intact That's fine, but when it's broken up like this, it must be replaced. I tried to not get to this point this metal is even warped. This thing has seen temperature that it's not supposed to see, whereas this one's flat. If you happen to shut that damper down too early and your fire's not established properly, you're going to be putting a lot more impurities through your catalyst. And it's gonna gum it up, it's going to uh, choke it up, and it's not gonna burn properly. And then when that creosote ignites, it's gonna break this all day long. That's gonna happen when you have wood that's not seasoned, uh, a lot of moisture content, uh, and not pyrolyzed before you shut your unit down. Now, coming over to the creosote, there are several different types of creosote, and I've done this since I was about 12 years old, and I'm still finding new things out all the time. I'm seeing new scenarios. I'm seeing even creosote in different ways. Uh, here recently, I picked up this little piece. This is an expanded creosote. You can see the little bubbles in it. This is very light, and it just kind of, almost like potato chip, very light. What happened with this is there was a chimney fire in a wood burning system, and the exhaust and the air intake to feed that chimney fire with, with oxygen was the same, same hole. The smoke gets, uh, thick enough that it chokes the air out and the air is mixed in with the fuel, it cools down and it's all expanded and that's why there's so much air inside of this. It's where the little bubbles come from. Whereas this is a very thick creosote, that's all creosote there. Just like all this is creosote, that is thick. You know, look at that mess. There's third degree glaze. Um, there's some of the bubbles inside of here as well. And that actually came out of a house, is that correct? Yeah, this was a customer that had a chimney fire. Uh, the insurance was brought, brought in and involved in the situation. And I think it was this piece came out of the same house, uh, one of the flue tile. And you can see that it was dirty on the outside of the tile. The tile breaks, the creosote gets on the outside of the flue tile into a place that can't be swept out, which means that the tile has to be replaced. So. If you're burning wood and you have a masonry chimney and you notice there's some cracks or any glazing in that flue, you better call a chimney sweep. Uh, get that looked at, get that replaced. And there's a good chance that you had a chimney fire and chimney fires cause damage. Mm -hmm. I can very confidently say that if you are selling green firewood, you're putting people's lives in danger. And if it's your fault in some way, shape or form, whether you worked on a chimney or you sold someone something that was 
inferior. You could potentially be brought in to subrogation on the backside of a chimney fire. If someone dies, if someone's house burns down, you could be brought in and sued for your part that you played in that event. In that scenario, you need to be straightforward and honest and educate your customer. If you have green wood, say it's green wood. Don't try to tell them that it's seasoned if you just split it last month. If you have wood that sat out there and it meets that moisture meter reading that, uh, that the EPA requires or, or your local state or authority, then that's great. Encourage your customers to get a moisture meter. They're pretty cheap, they're pretty easy to obtain. Uh, but be straightforward, be honest. Any paperwork that you have, you might wanna even put that on there, green, stacked for next season or somewhere along those lines to take the liability off of your back. Put on my chimney sweep hat here. <laughs> the problem with burning green wood is one, you're wrecking your investment, okay? The EPA has a whole thing you can go on and read about. And the EPA, sometimes we would rather them not be around, but they do have a place. And when it comes to the wood burning units, they're 2020 EPA uh, compliant. It really does make a difference. Sometimes uh, some of the units are harder to get used to using on the front end, but once you overcome the issues, that you're not used to. You're not gonna be able to burn this stove the same way that you burned your 40 year old stove. There's a lot going on here that you need to learn with and you have to have the proper wood because if you have green wood, it's not gonna burn right and you're gonna be frustrated. But if you are burning the right wood, you're less likely to have damage. You're less likely to have a chimney fire. If you have your annual inspection, you have it swept, you're less likely to have a chimney fire. You wanna protect your investment. You probably spend a good penny on your wood burner or the liner to go into it or the chimney to be built up or replaced or, or brought up to minimum standards for safe use and you don't want that to go bad. Use the proper wood, have proper burning techniques, have it swept annually. Hey Joe, before you roll out. Okay, yeah. I got one of these just for you. <gasps> what is it? Ohio brick. It's an Ohio brick. Yeah, these Holy are vintage cow. brick. They're not easy to find. Really? Where did you get this? Uh, I had a, a teardown that was interior and the mortar wasn't laid properly, so it came right off all the brick. They cleaned up real easy. Normally they're on a part of a chimney or a structure and you can't get the mortar off. Wow, so that's really cool. I think I know exactly where we're going. This is going to be part of our uh, display on our desk. Yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot. That's yes, awesome. Sir. You're you know, it's one thing to live in one of the greatest states in the country, but it's another to have it on a brick. Huh? Yeah, Corey, I really appreciate you having us out at your showroom. And I think we really learned a lot about chimneys and, and, and catalysts, the new EPA stoves, and the role that firewood plays with it. Thanks a lot. Guys, and I really hope that you uh, enjoyed this uh, video today. This is a little bit different than what we've been putting on, but I just thought maybe this would be something that could be of a uh, service to you. I want to thank everyone for supporting the channel, buying our shirts and stickers off of the online store. It's been a real big success. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like this video. And I want everyone to have a great day.